Ever since the very first trains in the early 19th century, trains have had fixed wheel sets. This means that each wheel is attached permanently to the axle, which is fine when the train is running on straight track. However, when there is a curve in the track, the outer wheel has to spin faster than the inner wheel, as on a car, or the outer wheel has to be bigger than the inner wheel so that the, its circumference is bigger. The trains need to be able to go around curves, both to the left and to the right, so at different times both wheels have to be bigger than the other. In the early 19th century there were various forms of horse-drawn railway and the wheels were held on by flanges. These worked but they would rub against the rails, creating friction and making a horrible noise. A neat solution was found probably by accident when they started casting the wheels. When you cast the wheel it will naturally have a slope slope on it to get it out of the mould. And this is the answer. Notice as the wheel set starts the curve the flange moves towards the outer of the curve. This is where the radius of the wheel is greater and therefore the wheel self adjusts. When the diagram shows just the section of the cone that is in contact with the rail, then the difference in the diameters is even more obvious. As the wheel set turns the curve to so the diameter and the circumference of the outer wheel is greater, Remember that the circumference is equal to the diameter multiplied by pi and hence the ratio between the diameter and circumference stays constant with pi as the multiplying factor. If the track is too sharply curved, the cone shape of the wheels can't cope and the flanges of the wheel do rub against the rails, making a horrible noise and wearing out the track. Most tracks don't corner this sharply. When the wheel set self-corrects, it can mean that the wheels make an odd angle with the track and take a wobbly swaying path down the rails. This is one reason why old trains often sway gently, and modern suspension is a lot better at coping with this. In reality, track geometry and rail science is very complicated. Curves have to be banked at just the right angles depending on their degree of curvature and the speed of the trains. This allows the trains to negotiate the curves and reduces the rail wear. From the Seven Valley Railway, back to the studio.